Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one retail at a time, back with the man, the myth, the legend, and great friend of the channel and returning 2022 guest, Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing great, Michael. Looking forward to another year of these great conversations. Yeah, I, I look forward to starting the week with you every week. So thank you again for doing it for me to you. It's, it's a, a great treat to talk to you every Monday morning. So what I want to talk about here is something I have called for the last month or so. Uh, I'm going to share it with you and then kind of see if A, do you agree, maybe disagree, maybe you'll push it off. Uh, and then B, uh, talk about the fact that, you know, it's often a great time to make some money. And that is the fact that I think the Fed has to induce a recession next year. I think they have to get aggressive eventually, tighten monetary policy, suck out all of this liquidity, which I think leads to a recession. And uh, so I just wanted to talk about that first. So I think a recession happens sometime next year, maybe Q2, Q3. Uh, what do you think about that? You know, I don't know about recession, you know, that is a reduction in GDP, you mm -hmm. know, for a sustained period of time of what was it? I'm looking for the definition. Now. Two quarters in a row. No, recession is negative GDP, two quarters in a row. Yeah. Two, okay. Just negative. Not, not a certain percentage. Not a percentage. Just negative growth, two quarters in a row. Okay. You know, I don't know how that happens. I mean, we're not having, you know, an issue. Well, you know, it depends on how many people are back to work and, you know, the, the, um, you know, pandemic and where we stand there. But let's just say everything's, you know, we're over mm -hmm. that, we're getting back to work and everything's going well. I don't see you see how you can reduce GDP. I think GDP is going to continue to increase because okay. we're still kind of limping along from a supply chain standpoint. Um, <clears throat> you know, a lot of things are artificially propped up because of inflation. Prices mm -hmm. have gone up. Yeah. So that's also going to increase GDP. Absolutely. Um, You're right. You know, it's revenue, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the easiest ways to increase top line sales, raise your prices. Raise your, yeah. And you're very, you're dead on because uh, just so people know what he's talking about, Q3 GDP growth memory serves was five, no, 3.1%, but inflation was 5.2. So again, we, if you actually do the math, like for like, we were negative 2%, but that's not how GDP is calculated. So you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's top line sales and the president can stand up and say, hey, we hey. boosted GDP 8%, you know, yeah. five of its inflation. Yeah, or or yeah, 10 of its inflation. It actually went backwards. Oh, so it's interesting. Parts. So I don't, I don't okay. see recession because, you know, more and more people are going back to work. There's still demand. We're still producing as fast as we can. Um, you know, the only thing that's restricting production right now is supply chain. Mm. You know, you can't get things from overseas, um, you know, so I, I just don't see that happening. But I do see, like we talked about before, you know, deleveraging an assets that could be perceived as recessionary environment. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in terms of, you know, slowing down actual GDP, I just don't see how that's possible. There's too much demand. Yeah, we're going to see. I, I, I still think a recession is coming next year. I love the fact that we disagree. The only thing that could happen is maybe the recession gets pushed to 2023, kind of for the reasons you've outlined. This is what this is what I see coming. And just I'll just lay the dominoes out. And I'm wrong all the time. So but anyways, I see the Fed having to get aggressive. As we talked about in episode number two, I don't think they start aggressive. I think they get behind the curve. And when they're behind the curve, when CPI gets reported at 11 percent in Q1, for example, then they're going to have to slam on the brakes. They're going to have to just come out, and I think they're. I think they have. I think they're going to have a. I think we'll have a Fed-induced recession because they're not going to get aggressive this week. They're going to be late to the party once again, and then bad stuff happens next year. I'm. I hopefully I'm wrong, but it's how I see this. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we haven't seen through the pandemic going back to March 2020. You know, on we haven't seen significant pullback in consumer spending. We saw no. an increase. Yeah. Um, well, that's kind of like five trillion dollars just raining down on people. So, a little bit of that was part of it, but for the average consumer, most people didn't didn't take advantage of that. You know, mm -hmm. you got maybe a little bit of stimulus. You know, those types of things. A lot of jobs were lost. A lot of businesses had to close. But people, even you know, out of work, were still out spending money. They still mm -hmm. are now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's really interesting. Um, you know, what's going on with the amount of people that have exited the workforce. You know, there is a lot of wealth out there because of assets, because of the stock market, exactly. real estate, yeah. you know, crypto. I mean, it's the numbers of people that have quit their jobs to make a full-time living in crypto. I mean, it's a big number. I, I you know, I read an article about it a few weeks ago, 90,000 people or some. Yeah. You know, it's the, it's the, again, folks, I've lived through this before. There's people that were making there. I had a, so I was a manager back in the dot-com run-up. And I had a direct employee quit to become a day trader. It worked for like six or seven months. And then he had to go find a job. 
and yeah, again, a lot of people have been able to do that, but that's been, you know, over the last year, we've had a very extraordinary environment because of, to your point, all of the helicopter money part, you know, pumped in the economy. Now the government, you know, with their stimulus spending, that's going to pump a lot of, you know, liquidity into the economy apart from the Fed with um, infrastructure spending and things like that. So there's still, you know, a bunch of that yet to come. But uh, the interesting thing is how many people, even though we have record, you know, levels of people unemployed or not working, exiting the workforce, you know, that's not affecting spending, which is where GDP really comes from. You know, yeah, well, let, well, let's play this out. And again, this is what I see coming. And I don't, I don't like what I see, but it's what I see. So I have to share it. So I think the great deleverage, as we talked about last week and again in episode one, that will be a lot of wealth destruction, right? There are a lot of people that feel good today because the last 12 months has been easy to make money. I believe the next 12 months and certainly the next six months won't be as easy as the last 12 months. People start losing money, losing equity. They sell at a loss. They raise cash. They get scared. They retreat. They start spending because of the holidays. And lo and behold, they got nothing left March or April. That's kind of so what the I tax see. Bill. The, that's yeah. when your tax bills come in. So be ready. Be ready. Yeah. Don't forget. Uncle Sam wants his piece. So yeah, that's, that's kind of where I see right now. I just see kind of a I see the house of cards crumbling kind of right in front of me. I'm, I'd love to be wrong. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, we'll, we'll just have to see how it all shakes out. And you would think that if, you know, people are going to pull back and start building reserves up again, it's going to happen after the first of the year because you do have tax season coming. We've gotten through the holidays where everybody's happy, spend, they're not going to pull back now, uh, you know, that type of thing. Yeah. But, you know, Record people, retail sales. We got retail sales, I think, Wednesday. I think it's mm -hmm. going to be a record because, again, we've got $1.3 trillion in excess savings still. We have every freaking retailer telling us about delays. Nothing is on sale. People are going to shop till they drop. And then they're going to turn around in January or February and go, oh my God, my credit card bill, I got no money left. It's the consumer is predictable. And that's just what I see coming. Yeah. And I saw a report a few weeks ago that, you know, consumer debt, you know, credit card debt is on the rise. Starting to, um, you know, obviously holidays has a lot to do with that. People have been spending ahead of the holidays this year because of delays in shipping. But, mm -hmm. you know, the interesting thing too, is a lot of people are tapping that equity in their, in their real estate, in their houses. Just started. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. So that's, that's leaking its way out, um, you know, into the economy. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, re recession. It's just hard to see that because we really didn't even have one in the pandemic other than just being shut down yeah we, we kind of induced go, you know, yeah 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 once right. we we're able to open back up boom it's off to the races so you know uh i think we still have more opening to do we still we still okay. have more you know production that we have not um you know put back into the system yet so mm -hmm. it'll be interesting to see yeah i i love this conversation because we just disagree i think i think um yeah uh, I, that's why I talk to experts just to kind of round out my decision. I don't pretend to be right all the time. I just kind of share what I share and we'll see what's going forward. So again, the reason I wanted to talk about a recession specifically with you as an entrepreneur is if we have one, and again, we will have one, it's, is it next year or the year after the business cycle is undefeated? Recessions are a great time to make some money if you're prepared. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you want to have cash and or resources available to take advantage of opportunities in recessionary times, just like any any time, you know, markets when they're up, times are good, but it's a lot of times it's harder to make money in a, in a bull market, especially in the peaks of it. Mm -hmm. um, it's much easier when, you know, you're back in those valleys again uh, and able to take advantage of opportunities looking for the next round. And, you know, we saw some of that with, with all the businesses that, you know, unfortunately went out of business. A lot of new ones are reopening. When real estate values go down, people jump in, mm -hmm. you know, when stocks are, are you know, tapering and, and deleveraging, people jump in and buy them and then you can ride it back up. You know, of most of the people who have made significant money in crypto have all made it in the last year that were newer uh, when they bought in, you know, after the pandemic and rode it up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's a little bit more difficult now. Uh, and then the ones that made the real money are the ones that bought in, you know, two years ago and right. uh, those things. So it's a little different now, you know. And that's where your opportunities are going to come in as we delever, you know, as things slow down, you know, prices change and it creates opportunity to go in there and create value, create equity uh, and, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. Very cool. It's a lot of fun. So, again, if you were going to call a recession, you're certainly not calling one next year. Would you put one out in 2023, 2024 or just, you know, see one coming for a while? I, I just don't see it happening okay. in the sense that we've experienced them before, especially with 
Fed policy because mm -hmm. if things start to go south, they're just going to jump right back in. Yeah, that's and that's the bugaboo, right? I don't think the that's where I that's where my opinion hinges on that, right? I believe the Fed can't do what it's done the last five times, which is the Fed put. I believe they realize now they've got to they've got to suffer short term pain, a la Paul Volcker, or this thing just explodes. So now, if they pull if they pull the plug and the Fed, you know, just lets rates go up and they they are not. Uh, pumping liquidity, they're not buying bonds, assets, you know, things mm -hmm. like that, and they just let it play out, then yeah, you could you could potentially see some recessionary environment then mm -hmm. because prices will rise, people will pull back, they stop spending, you stop spending, you stop producing, and yeah. the whole trickle down effect. Um, you know, but that would that would be the catalyst. And I'm just not sure, and you have an election year coming that mm -hmm. the Fed's going to pull the foot off the gas. Yeah, we'll see. It's going to be not this is this next year. Is going to be very interesting. 2022 won't be like 2021. 2021 was kind of, again, it was it was kind of the leverage was building. I think 2022 is going to be very interesting for entrepreneurs and investors. So stay tuned. Big year coming. There we'll be go. there. We'll be right there with you to take you know show you how to take advantage of it. And we're going to be talking about specific ways to do that. So 2022 is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, sir. And how can people follow you? GregDickerson.com. That's where all my info is. YouTube podcast. Go check it out. Thank you, buddy.